Hello and welcome to a walking, talking mock for your language paper one, uh, the reading section. For this to work, you will need to have downloaded the extract and the exam paper. You don't necessarily need to have printed them off, but it would be really helpful if you can print off the extract in advance, just so you can highlight it and annotate it as we go. If you're unable to print off the exam paper, that's fine. Um, you can just answer the questions in your exercise book. I would say that it would be helpful if you could print off the exam booklet just because it gives you an idea of how much you should be writing for each question. But it's not the end of the world if you can't. So what is a walking talking mock? A walking talking mock is to help you prepare for the assessment. So it's my job to kind of give you some sort of idea of what you should be doing for each question and how much time you should spend on each question. Um, we would normally be doing this within a classroom and it would normally be your class teacher. Um, unfortunately, you have been lumbered with me, Miss Murphy. Um, but the plan is that we're going to carry on preparing for this assessment as we would normally and that you just need to follow the instructions in this video. The equipment you will need is at least a, a one black pen, ideally two, just in case you have that panicked moment when the ink runs out always in the middle of an exam, and a highlighter. Some of you might go a little bit extra and have several highlighters, in which case I love your style. If you don't have a highlighter, that's fine because you can always underline it. So you will need a pen, highlighter and extract. If not on paper, then definitely an electronic copy. So on your phone or iPad or whatever. And a exam booklet or exercise book. So this is an overview of the timings for the exam. So in total, the reading section lasts for one hour. You'll see you have 15 minutes to read through the extracts. Reading through the extracts isn't like normal reading. It isn't like you're reading a book and you're continuing on to the next page. You only have a short part of this extract of the story even. And so you really need to make it your own. You really need to understand it really thoroughly and annotate the extract itself with kind of prompts of who the characters are, what's happening to them, where it's set. Really make sure that you have a really thorough, in-depth understanding of what happens before you go on to answer any of the other questions. This is testing your reading skills. So don't rush and skimp on the part which is testing. Um, your understanding will be assessed through your ability to retrieve information in question one, analyse in questions two and three, and to evaluate in question four. And ideally, those 15 minutes would be spent with you understanding the extract, which is kind of like your lowest reading skill, and then being able to infer information, building on that for your analysis, and finally your evaluation. So you're using those 15 minutes to kind of think about what's happening in the extract firstly, when you have that understanding secure, then you are thinking about how you can use this remaining time, if there is any, to plan for the future questions. So look ahead at the questions on the exam paper and think, right, what can I use for this question? What can I use for that question? So what we need to do now is to work through these steps. So you will have 15 minutes where you have predicting. So you're looking at the title of the extract. What's it called? What's it got in the little synopsis box? What information do you learn about what might happen in that extract before you even start reading it? Then read through it. Are there any words you're unfamiliar with? Can you figure them out from the sentence that they're in? Can you figure it out from, kind of make a guess about what it might mean based on what's happening around it? Start questioning the extract. Who are the characters? How do they know each other? Who is talking? Make sure that you understand and are following the plot. And then at the end of it, just write one sentence to sum it up, to say sort of this extract is about. Your summary should not be the same as the synopsis. Your summary should be like a really specific, if you had to tell somebody who has just missed the reading of this extract, what happens in it, this is the sentence that you would say to them. So it's just what happens really specific to that extract. So what you need to do now is pause this video, spend 15 minutes reading the extract, thorough understanding of it, look ahead to the questions if you have spare time, 
If you don't, that's fine. The most important thing that you gain during these 15 minutes is a really secure and thorough understanding of what happens in that extract. Okay, so now we can just tick off reading the extracts. We understand them. We are good to go. We just have these four questions to answer. We won't be answering them all today, but we will be answering them all over the next two lessons. So question one, you have five minutes to answer it. And what you need to do is to follow the steps on the slide. So you read the question, you underline the line numbers mentioned in it. This is really important because the exam board are quite picky. If you give them something which is about the jungle from line 10, they won't give you the mark. It's really specific that you are getting it from those lines. Um, underline what you're looking for. So here you're going to be looking for four things about the jungle. Then you need to get your extract and mark on the extract the line numbers that you are finding this information from. So I normally highlight it down the column from lines one to nine and reread those named line numbers. And you are just looking for four quotations which show you something about the jungle. You don't need to change it. You don't need to adapt it. Literally just copy across the quotations. This is a question which is designed to test your information retrieval. It's the equivalent of if you had a cookbook in front of you for a recipe for a risotto and I asked you how much rice we needed and you would tell me 200 grams. And I would write down 200 grams. Don't need to change it, just copy the quotations down and make sure that there are four of them. So you now need to pause this video. You have five minutes to answer that question. I'm really hoping that you have actually paused it and aren't going to be one of these people that cheats and skips ahead. So I'm trusting you that you are going to be pausing because here are the answers. So you can say um, the ones on the left are immediate obvious ones so that it was high, broad, wide, big, musical sounds filled the sky. Um, you can then accept. Accept means that it's you've slightly changed it. Um, there are dinosaurs instead of Tyrann Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, reject these ones in the right column. So these are any things which aren't mentioned in those lines or aren't mentioned in the extract or aren't specific to the question. So if you check through your answers now and give yourselves a score out of four and then we are ready to move on to question two. So for question two, we're now moving on to more advanced reading skills. So this is where having spent those 15 minutes really making sure our understanding of the extract is secure will come in handy because it's asking us to analyse how the writer has used language. So here we are looking in detail at a specific section of the extract. So we're not looking at the whole extract for question two. Instead, it is asking us to look at lines 16 to 26. And it asks, how does the writer use language here to describe the Tyrannosaurus rex? So we are looking at, when we are analysing language, the words and phrases which have been used, any language features and techniques. So that are things like your similes, metaphors, personification. Um, it can be listing, can be triples, uh, repetition, anything where you are thinking about specific words and phrases and how the writer has put them together or chosen them to create a specific effect. In this case, to describe the Tyrannosaurus Rex, that all comes under for question two. So answering this question... You will have 10 minutes to consider any words or phrases here which describe the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Once you have highlighted them, you need to ask yourself, well, what impression do I, as a reader, get of that Tyrannosaurus Rex? And that's kind of the starting point for your analysis. So are you supposed to be scared of the Tyrannosaurus Rex? Are you supposed to be kind of thinking that it's really cute and they're massively 
um, got huge bad press and actually are complete sweetie pies. What opinion are you supposed to have? How are you supposed to feel about it? And then using those quotations in your answers, you're aiming to kind of explore and explain how the writer has created that effect. Why have they made those specific word choices to create that effect? Why have they used um, particular figurative language, so particular metaphors or personification? You're unpicking their writing. There's going to be lots for you to say here. So if you are looking for those top, top grades, you almost want to think, right, what is the most obvious answer here? How can I step back and choose something else, choose something a little bit different? If you are aiming for kind of a four or a five, then what we're looking for is your ability to explain your own interpretation of that Tyrannosaurus Rex. You are aiming to show the examiner how strong your understanding of that extract is by being able to unpick kind of the, the workings behind it. So you're aiming to write roughly two paragraphs here. If you have the exam booklet, then it will give you some sort of guidance for how long your, um, your right answer should be. Um, you are aiming to talk about what the Tyrannosaurus Rex is presented as, how you know that, so that's your quotations, and why that quotation shows you that. You're aiming to use more than one quotation in your paragraph. Use as much evidence as you can to support your opinion about what the Tyrannosaurus Rex is like. And then you're using those quotations to kind of think about the writer's choices that have been made. And you need to do this in 10 minutes. So if you pause the video now and have a go, keep this um, slide on the screen. Annotate your extract if you can with what you can note about how the Tyrannosaurus Rex is described here and then have a go at writing your response either in the exam booklet or your exercise book. So what I'm going to do now is talk you through some example responses for question two so you get an idea of what you are awarded marks for in this exam. I'm going to remind you again that this exam is testing your reading skills and it's fairly similar to how in maths there's a real focus on showing your working out and this is the English equivalent of you showing your working out that when you read that extract what did you learn about that Tyrannosaurus Rex so here we have a level one response which would earn roughly one to two marks and they've gained those marks by offering simple comments and using quotations so we have the Tyrannosaurus Rex towered 30 feet above half of the trees and the word towers tells us that it's big. The writer says it is a great evil god and a terrible warrior, so it sounds horrible. You can see the writing in purple is the, the comments that they have made about the quotations. So they're kind of the how and the why, the working behind the extract. So we learn that this candidate knows that from reading that extract, They've learnt that a Tyrannosaurus Rex is big and it sounds horrible. It's quite simple comments in terms of actually learning about the dinosaur. And to move up to a level two, they would need to add some inference. And when we're talking about inference, we're talking about reading between the lines. That if it is towering, yes, it tells us that it's big, but it's also it's towering above the trees. So you're bringing up that next level, the sense that it's huge that it's going to be quite overwhelming, it might be quite intimidating if you're in that jungle, that you're completely covered by this Tyrannosaurus Rex. A good way to talk about inference is to talk about connotations, and so you're automatically thinking about the reason why the author has chosen a word like towered. So an example response for level two, where you are attempting to comment on the effect of language, is where you have something like the word towered suggests that it is bigger and higher than everything else. The writer uses metaphors to describe it as a great evil god, so it sounds not only big but bad, and also a terrible warrior, suggesting it fights to get what it wants. So here, the candidate has attempted to comment on the effect of language. So we have this idea that they're starting to infer that it doesn't say in the text that it's bigger and higher than everything else, 
but they read between the lines of the fact that it's towering 30 feet above half of the trees, it kind of is implying that it's higher than everything else in the jungle. You'll also note that despite talking about metaphors, there's still only three to four marks because the comments that they have made about the metaphor isn't particularly strong. So if you are the kind of candidate who kind of struggles to find your similes and metaphors, then this question is kind of designed to help you in the sense that they're actually, the examiner is looking for your explanation of how and why the language works. So talking about words and sentences is fine if you're then able to talk about how they have been put together and analyse why they are effective at describing the Tyrannosaurus rex. So a level three response would look to gain five to six marks. And here we're starting to see a clear understanding of language. So they are explaining clearly the effect of the writer's choice. So we have the verb towered suggests great height as if it is leaning over everything below in a scary and threatening way. The creature is described metaphorically as a great evil god to suggest its massive size and powerful and wicked nature. This idea is continued with the image of a terrible warrior, implying the Tyrannosaurus Rex is a fighter to be feared, prepared to use its strength to inflict damage on its enemy. This is where we see the benefits of using that what, how, why to consider what we're using and analysing in our response. Because we see here, implying the Tyrannosaurus Rex is a fighter, that should automatically be kind of your what? that you're sort of thinking, well, what does the writer want me to think about this Tyrannosaurus Rex? And you're thinking, well, it's kind of like a fighter, that we should be scared of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And then how they're using language has been explored here. They are starting to explain it in the sense that they are talking about what words mean and what they... So here, for instance, a great evil god to suggest its massive size and powerful and wicked nature... It's not quite at analysis level, because in order to get to analysis is where you are pretty much entirely considering that figurative meaning in an extract. So this is a level four response. This is the top level where you would be gaining seven to eight marks out of eight. And this is that analysis response where we have... The writer employs an extended metaphor of power and strength to describe the Tyrannosaurus rex. He says it towered over the trees. The verb towered, suggesting that the huge creature is imposing itself on its jungle surroundings from a great height and intimidating everything beneath it. It is personified as a great evil god, implying the Tyrannosaurus rex is an all-powerful being without mercy and also a terrible warrior. An image that conveys the idea of an invincible fighting machine destroying everything in its wake. So here you can see their quotations are short. In terms of the terminology, it's kind of used throughout. So we have extended metaphor, um, verb, personified, implying would count as terminology. Um, that it isn't kind of that they are kind of announcing the techniques that the writer have used, but actually that they're using that terminology to explore and explain their interpretation of the extract. That when they're considering the Tyrannosaurus Rex, to get into that analysis level, you're considering kind of the metaphorical or symbolic meaning of this creature. And then unpicking how the author has created that symbolic status using language. So what you are going to do now which is our final activity of the lesson, is to read through your response for question two. And you are aiming to firstly self-assess your response and be honest with this. What level do you think best um, describes your response? There are mark schemes at the back of your extract booklet. So that is the mark scheme that the examiners are using to guide their response and to give you kind of a level of how good your answer to question two is. So look through your response. Have you written a detailed explanation of the effects of language? Have you used short, specific quotations which match exactly the point you're trying to make? Have you used subject terminology correctly 
and only to support your ideas. So instead of having kind of like tons of different techniques that have been used, that actually your ideas are taking up the bulk of your answer and then the terminology is only really slotted in to support it. And have you developed your explanation into analysis by considering kind of a deeper meaning behind the descriptions? Um, what we need to do is to use the mark scheme, use the example responses that we've gone through so you can go back and have a look at them on the video to add, change or remove parts of your response to question two. You are aiming to move up a level if you can that you're really considering looking at those examples, how you can improve your response. So pause the video, look back, read through your answer, aim to improve it. If you have a green pen, use it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. The aim is that you are reflecting on how you can improve your response to question two. As ever, if you have any questions about any of the content raised, in today's lesson, please contact your class teacher or you can contact me directly so I can explain what I was wittering on about. My name is Miss Murphy. Um, otherwise, have a lovely day.